Hi there, a warm welcome to the sweet spot. It's the Racing Post's weekly golf show. I'm Bruce Millington and he's Steve Palmer back in the seat after a couple of weeks off. We are going to be looking forward in the next half hour or so to the climax to the FedEx playoffs. It's the Tour Championship and also the uh, DP World Tour moves to one of its most stunning locations, Grand Sourcier, up in the Alps. So hopefully Steve's back refreshed and full of tips. Uh, we will also review what happened last week. First of all, Steve, how was the holiday? Portugal, wasn't it? Yes, yes, Portugal. And, and, and nice to go to Portugal um, and have a bit of luck for a change because previous trips to Portugal, that's my third time in Portugal. Previous trips, they've got off to bad starts due to betting, golf betting. Uh, Dustin Johnson on the first trip, you must remember that six shot lead in the HSBC champions, blew it as I was flying over there and uh, yeah, got the, got the holiday off to a howler. And then uh, Siwoo Kim, do you remember texting me when I was in the taxi from the airport? Mm. Um, at the Sam Horsfield Siwoo Kim face bitter yeah. and Siwoo Kim had a two shot lead and squandered that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Callum Shinkwin finally third time lucky. I've had a winner in Portugal and um, yeah, it was great to toast Callum Shinkwin with a with a few super box. <laughs> oh, you had a super box, did you? Yeah, where were you down in the lovely Algarve? <laughs> Albafera, yeah, Albafera, um, quaffing super box and, and toasting Sir Callum Shinkwin. Brilliant. Excellent. Most people's holidays get off to a bad start if the taxi turns up late or, you know, they can't get their particular scent in duty free. But for you, it's all about <laughs> golfers, isn't it? It's not a problem that affects that many people. No, no that's right. And what right. was the holiday highlight? Um, I think it was um, some water sports, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went on, went on what is known as a UFO where you're, you're on the back of a speedboat. My daughter and I went on on that, and then, yeah, she she couldn't stop laughing. And uh, oh, lovely! Yes, yeah, contagious, isn't it? When when your daughter's laughing, you can't stop Brilliant. laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. UFO of all things. Crumbs. I thought of you Saturday. I was at Palace, and it was very strange. This, and you were the only person I could share it with. Two rows in front of me at Palace was a bloke who looked exactly like Roger Maltby, the U.S. the veteran oh, U.S. Really? golf broadcaster. He even he had like the grey hair, the the moustache. The he had a golf shirt on and chinos. I kept looking at him and my son's going, why are you looking at that bloke? And I, I see he looks like Roger Maltby. And he goes, oh, <laughs> Roger Maltby. You, can't share you should it have tapped him on the shoulder. But then he wouldn't have known who Roger Maltby Not many people know who Roger Maltby is. No, that's um, the trouble. That's the on trouble this side of the Only pond. you would have got it. And I was going to try and get a picture of him. I thought, no, that's a little bit too <laughs> strange. But anyway, no, that, that would was... have been ambitious. That would have been ambitious. Actually, it I was would, probably yeah. disrespectful to the Dolphins. I mustn't be disrespectful to the Dolphins because they, 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 I watched some captive Dolphins while I'm on holiday. I should have said they're the highlight. I mean, they, they went, yeah, I feel sorry for these Dolphins. The least I can do is say that, that they were the highlight. You know, when you see them doing their leaps and that. Did they have a big kind of pool, or was it? Were they well, this is it. This is the, the point of confines. It's a bone of contention, isn't it? Because yeah, like, yeah they, they're always smiling, aren't they? But I think that's got something to do with the, the shape of their face, rather yeah. than it. yeah. They they come out and they're going, oh. yeah, <laughs> and you think, ah, oh, they're they're into it. But then yeah, you you do more research and they're not really smiling. So yeah, yeah. But thank thanks to the dolphins. And uh, hope you get free soon. Although there's a lot of sewage going in the water. Maybe they're better off in the swimming pool. Have you seen the sewage latest? Well, you're not in Portugal. They are here. It's disgusting. Isn't Absolutely it? disgusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went for a yeah. dip on, in Weymouth Sea oh. a couple of days back. And I thought, what have I caught no. there? I don't know what's going on in this country where, the, you know, the water companies. Are... Anyway, no, it's a golf show. Um, anyway, while you're away, Wilco did well. He had a nice uh, winner. Um who else? James Mason made his debut on the first show. He, he had a couple of good places. And then last week, poor old champ, he had um, Gavin Green. Terrific tip. Mm. And he, he held a big league going. So we'll start our review here with, with, a, with, with a look back at what happened in the Czech Masters. And Gavin Green, two shot lead. It was only a 54-hole tournament. And um, he double bogeyed 14, I think, and it all went wrong there. But hopefully a few people got a nice place pick up from that. The winner was Max. Can we call him Max or do you have to call him Maximilian Kiefer? I think we know him well enough now to call him Max, don't we? I mean, he's been in our thoughts a lot. I mean, you must remember the nine-hole playoff. Yeah, he lost a nine-hole playoff in 2013, and then he lost a five-hole playoff in um, last year. Last year, so uh, yeah, it's, it's, I felt pleased for Max Kiefer. Yeah, mm. I think I he think seems a about... nice fella. He said, "I liked his quote, Steve, afterwards. He said he's had a good life, and whether he'd won or not, he's still had a fantastic life, and he loves golf and he loves playing golf. So a non-moany golfer winning is always good. He was 55 to one if you picked him. I said." Were there grounds for it looking back? Could you have picked him a bit of a bomber's paradise? So would have been very tricky. Would have been very tricky. I mean, yeah, that was a three-round tournament in the end, wasn't it? It was a bit of yeah. a, um, yeah, a bit of a strange event. Yeah, I saw Thomas Peters uh, got, got I involved. Was just about in to say, I think it was a well-timed holiday because I reckon you wouldn't <laughs> I have been able. To, I reckon you wouldn't have been able to resist him, and then you would have got <laughs> himself into a great position, and then 
blew mm. it. He had a, a triple bogey as his back. It was back to bad Thomas Peters, and I think that would have sent you into tailspin. So I think you timed your holiday very well there. I watched the highlights. I was sure the destructive shot from the bunker. Yeah, yeah, it was an approach shot from the bunker that bounded through, wasn't it? Triple bogey. And then, yeah, Gavin Green's destructive shot was a hooked three wood, isn't it? But yeah, really, you hate it when your players take a three wood, you know, relatively safe club off the tee, and he hooked it into the water, didn't he? So, uh, yeah, a lot of golf played there. Um, and then the other one, the t'other one, uh, Patrick Cantley, of all, of all people. Sorry, I'm doing your mm. job for you here. No, that's right. Yeah, what do you, what do you want me to say? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, that's right. I mean, Patrick Cantley's got fantastic uh, form figures now in BMW. I think last four years, he's now 1 2 21 1. That's pretty impressive, albeit a different course this time. He mm. got outrageously lucky on 17. I mean, did you see that? He's smashed it. He's going straight into the bunker and it's hit the back, the back of the bunker. The, the sound has acted like a trampoline rather than a trap. <laughs> and it's like punched it forward and he's ended up with a, a you know, he can just but basically putt it onto the green for two and make make the decisive birdie so he got a little bit lucky there but it it was a t- I mean Scott Stallings played well he wouldn't have been one of the fancy contenders but mostly it was the cream rising to the top wasn't it man? yeah yeah you're right he was chuntering away after that drive left the club face wasn't it and then um, the, 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 the break of all time I mean yeah I mean, he was really solid generally though weren't they I mean you know questions were being asked if you remember after his 76 in the travelers that you know they broke our hearts remember in, in June um but uh, yeah, he, he, he can still be trusted. That was just an off day in the Travellers. Yeah, Patrick Cantlay's got a lot to offer, um, and yeah, all credit to that. And, and I also like to talk about Will Zalatoris, who, who while I was away, uh, won his first tournament. And he won it with um, with a new caddy. Did you notice that? Yes, well, that hippie fella has gone, hasn't he? Did he? Was he having a week off or is, is no? Will no, he, he's, he's got he's gone. Your old baggy trousers, as you christened him. That's you, you, right. Yeah, you, you nicknamed him baggy he had those trousers. Awful he's, trousers, didn't he? Yeah. Veteran caddy. Um, he got the boot. You know, time for a change, as they always say. And then, um, you know, his first outing with the new caddy, he, he got the win. So I felt for baggy trousers. But, um, yeah, so certainly Zalatoris was, was vindicated there. Um, and, yeah, should go from strength to strength. Mm. OK, let's look ahead now to the Tour Championship, Steve. And uh, it's, a, it's a tournament with a difference, isn't it? First of all, just explain, you know, perhaps to, to people watching who don't watch golf regularly and, and have come across this for the first time, think, what's all this handicap business? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, since 2019, we've had a handicap system in operation at the Tour Championship. The FedEx Cup leader, who's uh, who's done the best in the season ranking so far, will start this event on 10 under par. So in this case, it's Scotty Scheffler. Uh, the man second in the FedEx standings, Patrick Cantlay, in this case, will start on 8 under par. Uh, third place is at 7 under and so on and so forth um, until you get to the back markers uh, in this 30 man field. And the back markers will tee off on Thursday with an immediate 10 shot deficit. And the point of that, Steve, is what? Just to, to provide a bit of meritocracy, basically, isn't it? To reward season long performance. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, what's yeah. the winner walk away with here? The winner walks away with a cool $18 million. I mean, oh. yeah, it's, it's not just the Saudi Arabians who have got a bit of money. I mean, there's $75 million in the prize pot here. Oh. And, and and eighteen million dollars to the champion. So I mean, yeah, this is this is where the money is uh, is made, and this is why your Cam Smiths are hanging around for a, bit, to yeah, for a little bit longer. A little bit longer, yeah. Okay, so when I spin through the prices, that that's reflected. The handicaps are obviously reflected in it. And you, in case you're wondering why Scheffler and Cantlay are so short, Scheffler uh, roughly is twelve to five. It's a thirty man field, so I'm not sure how many extra places you'll get, but it is worth checking. Twelve to five, Scheffler, four Cantlay. 15 to 2, Chauvelet, 11, Zalatoris, 12, McElroy, uh, 16, Big Johnny Rahm, uh, 20, Tony Finau, 22, Bar. There is a str- there is a normal 72-hole stroke play market as well. I think I've seen McElroy in favourite there at 9 to 1. So that shows that back in the old days, it's it's or, or if you just go back to, you know, gross scores, it's quite wide open. But the point is the broadcasters will be offering scoreboards based on the handicaps isn't you know if you want to have a stroke play bet a the winner won't necessarily be trying to win it and b you'll have to do your own calculations hopefully that all makes sense let's get back to the uh nitty gritty of where we are what sort of course it is steve sure we're at east lake golf club atlanta georgia 7346 yards past 70 a long past 70 only two par fives this is the traditional curtain closure of the PGA Tour season. Eastlake has hosted every year since 2004. Fairways notoriously difficult to find. The greens typically firm and fast. 
this is a test. Uh, look to back strong ball strikers who can grind out plenty of pars. OK, righty-ho. How many selections? Three. Three tips. Far away with your leading fancy. It is Janda Shufele. Eight to one. I was surprised to see eight to one available about a player with emphatic East Lake credentials. He won the Tour Championship on his debut in 2017. He was seventh in 2018. He was the second best 72 hole scorer in the 2019 edition, the first with the new handicap system. He was the best 72 hole scorer in the 2020 event by a three shot margin. Then last year, he was the third best 72 hole scorer. So in the last three years of the handicap system, a total of only three players have defeated Xander Shafalo over 72 holes at East Lake. He hasn't won a FedEx Cup yet, but this time starting from six under par, I think Xander Shafalo will take his chance and, and, and lift the cup. He's four shots behind Scotty Scheffler, two shots behind Patrick Cartley. Over 72 holes, I think he overtakes both. He's been in superb form for the last four months. He won the Zurich Classic with Cantalay in April, and he's been back to his best since then, he won the Travellers Championship in June. He won the JP McManus Pro Am. He won the Scottish Open, and last week he was third in the in the BMW Championship. You talked about the each way terms, Bruce. He's a magnificent each way bet for me. Fifth the odds, the first five places, twenty nine players to beat. He's already ahead of twenty six of them. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about an eight to one each way bet on Xander Shevelin. I see he's also eleven to one in the stroke play. Would it be worth having sort of a, almost splitting your stakes, maybe? Uh, Is that a defensible play, or do you want to keep it nice and simple? I thought you made a very good point in your uh, in your your summary at the start there about the the players don't know where they stand in there, and I think that's in, in it, it very you know very important. You know, if, if you've got someone with a chance to win that, they might be going up the last with no chance of winning the other one, the the, the main one, and, and be a bit disinterested. I, I I don't like backing things where the animal doesn't really know um, what's happening. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you get that in rugby sometimes. You'll you'll back a, a, a team of favourites with like a twenty point handicap, and you know yeah. they're twenty four points ahead, and then they just give the other mob a try, and no one cares except you, you know. So yeah, it's yeah. not for me. It's not for okay. me. I, yeah, I think Xander Shafali is a fair bet in that market, but it's, it's, I just want to concentrate on the on the one that matters. Radio. So Xander Shafali, a very confident main fancy for Steve. Who do you think is the principal threat to him? I think Rory McIlroy at 12 to 1 is also a good each way bet. He's another player with an excellent East Lake record. He won the Tour Championship and the FedEx Cup in 2016, and in 2019 he was the lowest 72 hole scorer and also became the FedEx Cup champion. Yeah, Rory was a hero for the PGA Tour then. He's a hero for the PGA Tour now, you know, leading this quest to uh, retain all the best players. But in, in 2019 this handicap system came in very controversial and McIlroy made it look really good by being the 72 hole lowest scorer and winning the tournament by by four shots, despite starting with a five shot deficit. I mean, he was brilliant in 2019, um, 13 under par, if I remember rightly, for his, his 72 holes. Uh, started the event 10 shots behind Justin Thomas and, and, and left him and left him for dead. Uh, sorry, outscored Justin Thomas by 10 shots over 72 holes. I'll stop talking about that tournament. It just gets me very excited. Um, Macar <laughs> he's just the point is he's always to be feared at East Lake. And this time, you know, you can't quibble with his form. Seven top eight finishes in his last 10 tournaments. Top eight in every single major. Won the Canadian Open in June. He's starting at four under par this week. I think he quickly gets on the first page of the leaderboard. Uh, and, and I think this tournament means a lot to him. You know, if you look at this season, if you ask Rory how he's played, he say, I've played well. But he knows he hasn't won enough tournaments. And I think winning the FedEx Cup will make this an acceptable season to him. Uh, I think he's highly motivated to end on a high. And I think another little icing on the cake is that it's, it's, he hasn't just got a caddy, has he? He's got a best mate caddy in for him. And this is a chance to make a huge amount of money for his best mate. You know, how often do you get the chance to win your best mate a couple of million dollars? You know, it's 18 million first prize. Give it 10% to your caddy. You know, he, you know, do, they, do they give him 10%? Yes, yeah, yeah. Look, do they? They don't cap yeah. it, no? Yeah, no, 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 no. You, 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 you do it. I mean, Rory, Rory won this Kuncher. in... Unless you're... Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, who knows where you go? Yeah, a couple of quid. Um, but yeah, in 2019, when when Rory won it, Harry Harry got um, I think it was 15 million dollars back then, so he would have got 1.5. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think I think they're well up for it. Lovely, yeah, that's brilliant, isn't it? Just remind me about uh, the, the handicaps. Uh, Scheffler's minus 10. Did you say Cantlay six? Yeah, then and then Will. Got? We got Will there. Will oh. Zalatori, um, who, um, who had a little injury last week, a back injury. So um, yeah, very off-putting. 
He's off seven. He's off He's seven, seven, and then, and then down to Xander. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah I don't fa- I don't like Will Zelatoris for this for for many reasons. Um, yeah, I think Shafalia Macroy solid each way bets fifth the first five. Okay, and then who's the? Oh, go on, you have a quick swig. I saw you reaching for the yeah, diet coke. Thank you, there, thank, you. You? thank you. Yeah. Have you lapsed? You're back on. You're back on the diet coke. What was your What was we, your favourite tincture in Portugal? It's the super box for for lager, and what for a soft? Um, for softs, didn't have many softs. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was super box, and then um, they, they, they seem to be throwing complimentary port at me, which um, oh, um yeah. and obviously my wife's a teetotaler. Um, she, so I when the comp- that. So yeah, you go you go to dinner and then the complimentary port comes out and obviously I have to have both the complimentary. I don't want to offend. I don't want to offend, offend anyone. They must be no, drunk. No. Um, she doesn't drink at all, no. Well, she drinks no. not alcohol. Oh. No, no, no. Don't drink alcohol. No. So um, yeah, yeah. I, I overdid it on the complimentary ports a couple of times, but um, yeah, when in Rome, when in Rome. And what uh, time would what time you, you're around the pool and the kids are running them up? What time would you start thinking about your first beer of the day? Um, I think lunchtime's acceptable, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Around around high noon, one o'clock. <laughs> but, but that super bock is so so good. It's so solid. I mean, I wish they stocked it a bit more over here, but um, yeah, great. I'm sure, you can get it. Okay, right yeah. then. So we've got Showflow, we've got McElroy, and finally, who else do you like? It's a two hundred to one chance as we Ooh. live and breathe. It's Billy Horschel. I just think with five each way places on offer is worth a little tickle at 200s. You know, I've got three proven East Lake performers on my team this He's week. He's won Horsch- this, hasn't he, Horschel? You're, you're, you're absolutely right. Horschel's career highlight came in 2014. He was the star of the FedEx Cup playoffs and he won the FedEx Cup. And in 2018, easy to forget, Tiger Woods took all the glory for, for obvious reasons. Tiger Woods wins in 2018. Runner up, Billy Horschel. He loves this course. And last year, he proved it again. Seventh best score in the field last year. He's going to need some brilliant golf to win from one under par. You know, nine shot deficit from the, from the get go. But he's well capable of it. If he brings his memorial performance to, to East Lake, you know, did you watch the memorial in June? Billy Horshaw was superb. He won by four shots on a really difficult golf course. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Newfield Village. You know, yeah. If, if he brings that level to another difficult golf course that he likes, this week, then um, yeah, I think uh, Horschel's a runner. He's a horse for the course. He's a he's a Horschel for the course. Okay. And what about the favourite, Scotty Scheffler? I mean, obviously he 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 he's top gun mainly a because he's had a brilliant year, but b because if you if you split the year so far into two, probably the first half of it is is stronger than the second, isn't it? But that's not yeah. to say he's completely faded away by any means. I mean, he, what what does he do here? Does he does he attack from the get go, or does he play slightly defensively? <laughs> Well, it's a very it's a position he's never been in before, for starters, and it can take a while to adjust. I mean, Patrick Cantlay in 2019 it was in the final two ball for the first time ever and found it really difficult. He was the 28th best scorer of the of the tournament, um, you know, 28 or 30. He, he, he hated it. Justin Thomas hated it. You know, it's a, it's a really weird situation to be leading you know, with 72 holes to play. So there is that. He's got a lack of experience at East Lake in comparison to a lot of his rivals. He's only played there twice. And you make a good point about the, the, the season being split into halves, particularly on the greens. You know, he's, he's, there's been a fragility on the greens that wasn't there at the start of the year. He's missed some tiddlers. I just don't think I can back him at five to two with that little putting fragility that's come in. Righty-ho, anything else to add on the Tour Championship? Or should we move across the Alps? Well, we must talk about Patrick Cartley because a lot of people will be fancying him after the BMW Championship. But it, it, aside from last year, his East Lake record is, is not great. Uh, 2021 in, in 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 the old format, and then as I say, 28th in 2019 when he had a great opportunity. Last year, three players outscored him. It was just because he had that that head start. Uh, I mean, yeah, the last two champions at East Lake have had that 10 under par start. Dustin Johnson, then Patrick Cartley. I prefer Cartley at four to one to Scheffler at five to two. But uh, yeah, if you if you dig deeper into Cartley's East Lake record, it's not good. OK, right then, let's go across to the DP World Tour event this week. It's the Omega European Masters at Grand Sourcier up in the French Alps, that iconic venue, absolutely gorgeous. Um, tell us more about that, and then we'll have a spin through the prices, Steve. It's quite a short course, this, isn't it? Oh, Grand Sourcier. I mean, when, when you consider the altitude as well, it gets shorter. I mean, 6,824 yards past 70 only three par fives, a tight, tree-lined, fiddly little track. Uh, Theba Thiroth redesigned the course in, in 1999. Uh, he made the greens like upturned saucers, made it a bit more difficult. You've got to be a really precise operator to thrive here. Look at the honours board. Gives you some big clues. Miguel Anger here and there. 
Thomas Bjorn, Richie Ramsey, Matthew Fitzpatrick. These are the sort of types you want to be backing at Cranfield here. Yeah. OK, let's get the latest betting then. It's wide open, unlike the other tournament. Ryan Fox, 18 to 1. Fav, Adrian Moronk, 20. Robert McIntyre, 25. Rasmus Hoggard, 28. Victor Perez, 30. Adriano, 33. Tristan the Piston Lawrence, 33. Danny Willett, 35, along with Sean Crocker and Richie Ramsey and Marcus Armitage and Roman Langask and Richard Mansell, 40 bar. So it's better than we've had recently. Good, good enough tournament, wide open, uh, plenty of extra places if you shop around. How many selections? Four. Thank you very much. First up. It is a good tournament and the prize purse is not particularly big. So I think a lot of them actually come here just because it's so bloody beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I, you, part, you would, wouldn't part. you? I think it'd be a lovely thing to do to stop off, stop off up there and get a bit of mountain air. Yeah. I'd play for free. Uh, sorry, what's the question? Got the question is, who do you fancy? It's a great question. A small matter of. <laughs> the, the answer is Marcus Kinholt. 60 to 1 Marcus Kinholt, who's got an ideal game for Clan Thurthia. Neat and tidy. Typically efficient on the greens, a former prodigy, he was brilliant at a young age. On his debut at Clan Thier in 2015, in the week of his 19th birthday, when still an amateur, he was fourth at the halfway stage, finished 10th. Form figures of 56, 12, 47 as a pro at Crans. He's had some health issues recently, seems to be over, over them now. Third place in the Kazoo Classic a month ago was greatly encouraging. 23rd last week in the Czech Masters was a decent effort. Yeah, I think Kin Holt is going to win his second DP World Tour title on Sunday. OK, uh, who would you see as the principal danger to him? Another Swede. I fancy a Swedish one too, and it's Alexander Bjork at 40 to 1. Has been a Swedish champion at Kran six times. I think we're going to get another one on Sunday. Like Kin Holt, Bjork fell in love with Kranz from the off. He finished 16th on his debut in 2017. He was a European Tour rookie maiden at the time. Then on his return to Kranz in 2018, he opened with a 69, decent start, but got overnight food poisoning, had to withdraw. 28th and 13th in his two most recent Kran spins. This is clearly a dreamy layout for his skill set. He's been playing OK lately. Seventh place in the Dutch Open, the highlight. 20th in the Kazoo last time out. So we've had six different Swedish champions. We've had six different Swedish champions at Kronfurt. Okay. Yeah. Stenson? No. Bromberg? Yes. That's a good one. Um, I don't know. Go on. Anders Forsbrand was the <laughs> first one. <laughs> oh, Parnovic? I think he might have been one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Alex Noren twice. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good game. I love I love Parnovic, didn't you? He's one of my all-time favourite sportsmen. One of those sportsmen who just doesn't care. He's got no worries as he breezes through life. I'm so jealous of those people. Yeah, 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 yeah. He even set Tiger Woods up with his uh, his wife, didn't he? he, he Elon Nordegren was Jesper's nanny. Mm. And then Jesper said, go and say, say hello to my mate Tiger. And the rest is history. Yes, it certainly is. Right, anyway, so we've got a couple of Swedes as your main fancies. Who's your third tip, Steve? It's Sean Crocker, who is 40 to 1 as we live and breathe. Uh, and he landed a maiden DP World Tour title in the Hero Open at the end of last month. He's always been a tremendous ball striker through his struggle closer to the hole. But in that Hero, he putted superbly. Maybe he's turned a corner on the greens. He turns 26 next week. He's got great potential. We've always been keen on Sean Crocker, but we just gave up on it on his putter. But it looked really good in the hero. His Kranz form figures are 54, 28, 4. Really progressive, really encouraging. He was joint leader after three rounds at Kranz last year. Edgy start on Trophy Sunday as a maiden. If he gets a chance this time, I fancy him to, him to take it. Jolly good. And who's your final tip? Lucas Bejerigard. Lucas Bejerigard. Lucas Beergarden. Whatever you want to call him. <laughs> This lad has got plenty of talent, a seriously talented golfer. He was a hero for us in the 2017 Portugal Masters, which you won't remember. He, he won his second DP World, World Tour title in the 2018 Daniel Lynx. He beat Tiger Woods in the uh, in the WGC match play in 2019. He finished fourth in the WGC match play. So this is a class act who then got really inconsistent. You know, he beat Tiger Woods and then suddenly he, he, he worked on some swing changes and became really inconsistent, which is why we're getting 90 to one this week in a, in a really low grade event. Um, but there's reasons for, for optimism. He can clearly perform at Crons. He was ninth in 2017 when ranked 414th in the world. He was a playoff loser to Matt Fitzpatrick in 2018. So the course form's there. And last time out in the Kazoo Open, uh, won by, which was won by Sir Callum Shinkwin, 
Bejeri guard finished third. So uh, he may have turned the corner. I think that was that might be the the one that gets him going to the line now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ninety to one uh, price for cool. price. Yeah. You seem to have come back with with your pecker right up, Steve. Hungry, yeah, hungry, yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed, yeah, I miss you, I missed you. A couple, a couple of weeks off, you really start to miss you, the thing you've been doing your entire life. <laughs> Excellent, good. Well, good luck with all the tips. And let's reiterate. I forgot to reiterate last week. Somebody, um, somebody pulled me up on that. Oh, how remiss of you. Yes, Reiteration, remiss. remiss of you. Yeah. So, so we just have one last week. Okay, so we're going to reiterate on Steve's tips, and we'll start with the Tour Championship. And don't forget, this is the one with all the handicaps, so get the yes. right one. Who are the three for that, Steve? So we've got seven selections across two tournaments, so double fans. I always like to encourage double fans. It's definitely, you know, it, the, the game is on this week. Uh, Tour Championship, Xander Schufele, Rory McIlroy, and Billy Horschel. Okay, and then in the uh, European Masters? Marcus Kinhold, Alexander Bjork. Sean Quacker and Lucas Biergaard. Brilliant stuff. Excellent. So you're back in the swing of things. Eh? Is it good to be back at, uh, in Weymouth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weymouth. I mean, after the holiday, I went to Lords for the Test match. And, uh, Did you was, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really disappointed with uh, with England's performance there. You know, Which days did you go? And all that. Day three. So I didn't. So the know, day when it all went wrong. Yeah, almost certain to get a full day's play. And then it, it, you know, just after lunch is all over. I mean, it... Fazball's not going to work, is it? I don't know how many cricket fans we get on the golf podcast, but um, you know you, you can't play a test match cricket like that. You've got to go see yourself in and uh, see your mm. thing all. And uh, were uh, you yeah, being just... entertained, or did you pay no. your paying public? No, no, no. I got a friend who goes to a lot of cricket matches, and I finally said yes to one. I had the opportunity to go on the on the Friday, and they, I really liked the setup. It was a lovely vibe at Lords until it all went wrong, and then everyone was getting really angry. You know, the really? keep your wicket, keep your wicket. Were they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh, right. they're not used to seeing this sort of ridiculous approach to the to the to the sport. I mean, I don't know how much how, how you feel about it, but <sighs> I do, to be honest, I'm not a mad fan of Test matches. I think they're oh, a little bit of a sort of, of course. I remember you saying a bit yeah. of an anachronism. I, I I like the old bish bash bosh of T20. Well, so you probably you know. like this approach then. Yeah, they treat it like a T20, and then the, the people who have booked tickets for the weekend don't get to see any cricket. But say la vie. Exactly. And how are Weymouth getting on? Have they got made good starts to the season? No, no, no. We've got we've got our old club back. You know, we've got no chairman, no money, underscored a goal all season, definitely you know, back to back relegations now. It's just back back as it was. We're like that boom or bust. Do you remember when Leeds United used to be Champions mm. League threats and then relegated? We're like that. We either do really well or really badly and we we're oh, blind. Yeah. Sorry, I to hear about that. Asked, wish okay. me that. OK, sorry, mate. Well, let's not leave it on a bad note. Let's look into some super golf next week. Yeah. Well, I think you're joined by Jack Reeve, of all people. Lovely Jack's uh, back presenting. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're pleased about that. And you like working with Jack. And we've got the Made in Himmerland. Mm. And there's a Live tournament, isn't it? I don't think there's a US Tour event, is there? So we've got no, two tournaments. No, no, but we've no. got the Live and it'll be interesting to see, won't it? We know that Cam Smith, I think I read in the Telegraph somewhere that seven new people have signed up. But it was one of those ones that's paywalled. You click on the link and you only get the first sort of paragraph. So... Oh. I, I don't subscribe, so I don't know who the others are. Have we got any idea who the other defectors um, are? There was a bit of Cameron Young talk, wasn't there? I mean, did you see that um, that meeting that Tiger Woods hosted at the uh, the BMW? Yeah, yeah, they they brought Tiger Woods in. Tiger Woods was in it, Rory McIlroy in it, to try and convince all the people that haven't joined that they've made the right decision and, and they were they had some plans to revamp the PGA Tour schedule slightly. Uh, and, and Cam Smith, a lot of rumours abound that Cam Smith pulled out last week. So he didn't have to attend that meeting, you know, and and, and uh, you know that he, he cited a, a hip injury, I believe it was, but rumour is abound that he didn't fancy facing Tiger Woods in a in a room to discuss some, um, you know, live live stuff because he's he's already signed up, you know. Just a quick one before we go. Someone told me the other day, and I didn't realise this. I probably should have done, but <clears throat> you know when the sales so and so signed for X million dollars for live. That, so say you sign for for live. I think Dustin was what seventy five, wasn't he, or one hundred and fifty? One hundred or two hundred. Yeah, yeah. We don't know that, for sure. That's your, that's your. You have to wait. So say you get fifty million to sign for live. They don't just give you fifty million. That's guaranteed prize money. So if you so if say you win the first event and it's worth ten million, you yeah. don't get that. But the, you, that's that's knocked off your bill, your balance, if you know what I mean. All right, so you, right, you don't right. actually get any extra until you've won more than 50 million. Really? I didn't know that. No, that's, no, that's, that's groundbreaking. So, that's yeah, groundbreaking. someone told me that. You might want to ratify that before mm. next week because it's sort of 
brings in sort of motivational issues then, doesn't it? If you don't who actually... Who told you that? Yeah, was that Greg? Was it a man called Greg who told you that? Why would it be a man called Greg? Well, Greg Norman. I mean, he's been... No, no. no. <laughs> who told you that? No, well, no, no, you might not want to reveal your source. No, no, you know, one of these old-fashioned... It, 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 it was a mate I was playing golf with who knows all about these things, a former journalist. And everything. No, was it? No, yeah, OK. No, 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 yeah. No, but, but it might yeah, be worth looking into that. It's no, I will look into that. I will look so into you and that. Jack can have a, a chat about that, and then we've got the maid in Himaland, and then uh, and then hopefully we'll, you and I back the following week, and we get back in the swing now. The holiday period's out of the way, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hopefully, yeah, you know, we'll still have some decent players left on the on the PGA Tour. Hopefully, Tiger Woods gave him a good talking to. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, we we don't really want Liv to become stronger than PGA Tour, do we? Not really. I don't think. But, you know, who knows? Money talks these days, isn't it, Steve? Tragically so. I mean, tragically so. Um, you know, we're all waiting for that 50 grand gas bill to come through the letterbox, aren't we? Um, so, yeah, I hope Liv offer me a job soon uh, presenting their stuff. <laughs> I'm sure there's every chance. Thank you very much, Steve. Good to have you back on the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget, if you enjoyed the show, please hit that thumbs up. Let us know who you fancy in the comments. If you nail the winner, we'll give you a shout out next week. And it's Jack and Steve back next week for another Sweet Spot.